A while back, I covered some of the smallest drones ever made, but the question still remains on how small a drone can actually get. The answer is a little bit complicated because even though it is possible to build things at a micro level, the characteristics of flight change as you get smaller. And this is why drones have hit a bit of a threshold point in relation to their size. We also have to consider the critical components of a drone, which are typically the flight controller, a power source, and some type of propulsion system. But some of these components may not be integrated at all, and this may lead into some very unconventional micro or even nanoscaled vehicles. So I'm going to break this down into each individual component, and I'll explain what I mean by this. So let's begin at the flight controller, and one of the smallest flight controllers on the market right now is the Nuke, and it's 20 millimeters squared. Now it's nothing too sophisticated, but it does have a built-in PDB and ESCs. But that is a lot in the micro world, and this would make it impossible to break into the nano scale. And yes, it is possible to go to a microcontroller and eliminate some of these attributes in a flight controller. But some of the smallest microcontrollers are still a few millimeters in size. Now that isn't going without saying that it is very probable that we will see a smaller micro or flight controller in the future. But a different approach would actually utilize cloud computing. And this would offset some of the resources on the drone and set it to a ground station. And this would ultimately make the drone lighter in the end. Now in this type of setup, the drone would have very sophisticated computing and data processing. But it would likely still need some sensors to interpret its environment. And it's also going to need a redundant antenna for communication. It may be possible to go to a metamaterial antenna, which is quite a bit smaller than conventional designs. Another important piece of navigation equipment is the camera. And as of right now, the smallest camera in the world is the Omnivision at 0.575 millimeters squared. It can achieve 40,000 pixel images and 120 degrees field of view. Now, obviously, this exemplifies that the camera is going to be one of the lightest components in this type of drone design. And there's a very interesting argument that this could even supersede a need for a gyroscope or an accelerometer. But you would need a very advanced navigation algorithm. Now, if we take this one step further, it may be possible to integrate sensors and cameras across a swarm of drones. But that method has not been proven just yet, and testing on this method would probably work better on ground micro robots. The next critical component is obviously the power source. Now most commercial drones carry hefty batteries to power motors, but this is where you have to think unconventionally. One project which takes a different approach uses a photovoltaic cell for power. An infrared laser is aimed at the craft and thus it can harvest 250 millivolts. There is also the new RoboBee which weighs the same as a paperclip. It is also powered by tiny solar cells, enough to keep the whole contraption in the air for long periods of time. And it's actually one of the first versions which is not tethered to a power supply. Now this has not been done before, but another way you can power the machine is through RF wireless charging. And unlike magnetic induction or resonance, RF charging does not use any coils, and it can take advantage of very small receivers. It sort of works like a Wi-Fi hotspot, where the receiver can charge more efficiently as it gets closer to the transmitter. Now this is being researched by several companies right now, and obviously this has a wide range of applications. But it has not been implemented on a drone just yet, and it's a bit of a shot in the dark on my part. Now the next largest component is your propulsion system, and typically this is a motor, or it could be something entirely different. One craft which supersedes conventional design is solely powered by electrodynamic thrust, and ironically, it's one of the smallest crafts ever made. It uses a high strength electric field to generate a plasma of ionized air. The ions draw towards a negatively charged grid and collide into air molecules, thus creating momentum. The fun fact is that there are no moving parts, and smaller thrusters actually have better thrust to weight ratios. Now there is one major drawback when it comes to this type of craft. And even though it has no moving parts, it requires a way higher voltage when compared to conventional motors. Ultimately, this is probably one of the most scalable propulsion systems. But they cannot be powered by solar cells, and you need to find an energy source which can supply relatively high voltages. Now that we have covered most of the components in a drone, we have to look at one remaining factor, which is aerodynamics. 
Even if you could build a micro-scale drone, it does not necessarily mean that it will fly. This is all due to the classical Reynolds number, which is a ratio between inertia, size, and speed over viscosity. In simple terms, larger aircraft have high Reynolds numbers, but micro-scale drones would have smaller numbers. And flight in this aerodynamic domain is a lot tougher since aerodynamic efficiency is drastically reduced as you get smaller. A lot of research is being made to understand low Reynolds numbers, but it's cutting edge and we need to figure out how these aircraft work, maybe with supercomputing. And it's a very important key to developing micro scale drones. For now, researchers are boldly experimenting with different typologies of drones. One example of this is the Picolissimo, and it only uses one motor to fly. It is a fully controllable craft since it can torque its body and roll. Its gyroscopic design also allows it to pitch and even hover in one spot. This unconventional design makes it to be one of the smallest self-powered vehicles in the world. And another important feature about the Picolissimo is that it uses an infrared signal for control. And that feature could be incorporated into a micro design as well. There is also the four-winged robot, which is similar to the original RoboB. It also uses piezoelectric actuators, and it has more controllability since it can change the speed of each individual wing. The craft can carry over 260 milligrams, which would either be a sensor package or onboard power supply. So for conclusion, the perfect micro drone needs to overcome aerodynamic deficiencies. And we are going to have to overcome the problem associated with a low Reynolds number. The drone is going to have to be remotely powered or use some sort of lightweight energy system. It's very probable that a central remote computing system would be used to collect data and actually navigate the craft. And this also could be dependent on swarm integration to eliminate repeated sensors and cameras. And this would decrease the weight of individual crafts. Ultimately, it is very possible that we can build a very small drone maybe at the nanometer scale, but it's going to take an unconventional design and a lot of innovation. Anyways, that's my limited attempt on describing how we can build a smaller drone. And I would like to know what you think about all this. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel.